Hello, and welcome to DevOps Pipeline Setup and Creation using various tools introduction session. We will look at what a pipeline is, what is pipeline creation, and what are the various tools available on the market to create a working pipeline in a DevOps project. So, what exactly is a pipeline? A DevOps pipeline is essentially your setup in a software project that helps to deliver continuous integration, continuous deployment, and eventually finally leading to continuous delivery of your software project. We will discuss continuous integration, continuous deployment, and what exactly do we mean by continuous delivery in more detail here. So, the idea behind creating a pipeline is to be able to create a repeatable and reliable system and be able to continuously improve the process of software development and delivery in order to make your software delivery from concept stage to your customer faster. The goal here is to enable a constant flow of changes into production using an automated process by including various tools at each of the steps. So this is how our software development life cycle pipeline typically looks. You have processes that must enable uh, faster feedback cycles and create a culture for learning. The architecture for your software development life cycle for the software that you're working on should be agile for change and should be resilient to failure and you should be able to take what you learn from what is failing or what is not working back to your process faster and make the appropriate changes and continue with the pipeline. You need to have the necessary technology that enables you to implement a pipeline that helps you to increase productivity and maximize the impact of the software that you are developing. So for technology, you should have the right tools and the necessary software that uh, makes it possible for you to create an SDLC pipeline. You need an appropriate robust infrastructure such as servers, cloud environments, virtual machines, and various innovative platforms that enable creation of a pipeline, setup of a pipeline, working of a pipeline, and eventually deploying the software that you are creating using a pipeline into your production environment and then on into an environment that your users can access and have permission to look at. So to begin with, the developer writes the code and places the code in the source code repository. From there it is checked out and all the source code is integrated. The build is then created from the code in the source code repository. The various unit tests, system tests, and functional testing is done on the newly created build and any issues that are found are reported back to the developer. Of, of course, you also need to do a deployment of your build into various environments such as your testing environment, your system integration environment, UAT or staging. Uh, then finally, you get to do the security and penetration testing once the build is ready for production. Then your production environment is created and set up and the final build is deployed for your end customer. Now, these things that we just discussed are typical steps that we follow in an SDLC lifecycle for our software development and delivery. A lot of these steps are done manually. Manual steps make these less repeatable, more error prone and more time consuming. Uh, environment setups are long drawn out processes and build creation deployments are very time consuming, taking up team member time throughout the entire project. And this is time that could be better utilized on other more important tasks or tasks that improve the overall quality of the deliverable or increase the functionality you're trying to deliver to your customer. Now this is how it would look if you were to deliver all the DevOps SDLC steps using a pipeline. We still have our developer who is placing the code into your source control management system like Git, which can be continuously polled using a continuous integration system like Jenkins. Uh, that can run various tools like Maven or Ant to create a build from the code in your source code repository. So this can all be automated. Now, in order to validate the build, you can integrate your continuous integration server, your Jenkins with tools like Sonar or Fortify that help you with various validation and quality checks on your builds. You can create various quality gates in Sonar that basically validates your build is good to go into production and onto your customer for consumption. You can also trigger various tests like unit tests, script tests, or functional tests, and all your system tests using various plugins that Jenkins provides for different test tools like JUnit, JBehave for BDD testing. Uh, you can even trigger your performance test suites and integration tests. Jenkins offers a lot of plugins for various test tools and test suites. Even Selenium and Cucumber test suites can be triggered using your Jenkins integration server. 
Next, in order for you to do your user acceptance testing, uh, security penetration testing, you can integrate your JUnit, your Selenium, your Cucumber, your uh, Sauce Labs, and various testing frameworks with it, your continuous integration server. These can automatically trigger the uh, scripts on various test suites that you need to run against the build. Um, continuous integration servers also help you configure your production environment. You can integrate these with tools like Puppet and Chef, which are configuration management tools, and they can help you set up your uh, production environment, automate the creation and setup of your production environment, and finally do your build deployment on the environment. Now, this could be a VMware environment, it could be an Amazon AWS cloud environment, it could be a Rackspace or OpenStock. So, looking at this diagram, we have essentially converted all the manual steps from deployment to build, build to testing, uh, test to UAT, and finally to your production deployment uh, using various tools. So essentially, we've created a software integration, software deployment, and software delivery pipeline using various tools available in the DevOps Toolkit. Now, here is a snapshot view of the various tools available in a DevOps SDLC pipeline. These tools have been categorized by the different phases of your project. Now, here you see the various source control repositories. Next, you see uh, various databases, and then you see a whole bunch of build tools. Here you have your Jenkins and Bamboo and Travis. These are your continuous integration servers. Uh, these are various deployment tools. Uh, these are various configuration management tools. Here you have your containerization tools. Here we see the various cloud environments where your software can be deployed. Over here you can see various monitoring tools, various error logging tools, and various security tools. So you can see there are a lot of tools available, and depending on what your software requirement is or what kind of project you're working on, you can select any of these tools in any of these categories that fit your requirements. Hey, want to become an expert in cloud computing? Then subscribe to Simply Learn's channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in cloud computing, click here.